Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. In this section of non-African poetry, we'll be looking at Birches by Robert Frost. Now, Birches, what are Birches now? Birches are small to medium-sized trees found in the temperate parts of the world. Now, from here, we would comment on the background of this poem. The entire poem is a reflection of Frost's childhood memories of swinging on a particular type of tree called a birch. Now, um, Frost actually grew up in the American state of New England, where children were known to be fond of swinging on trees. The poem is very philosophical in nature. The poet also expresses and explores how the power of the imagination becomes a means of redemption and escape from the diverse problems that are integral to man's existence in this world. The first 20 lines vividly describes the birch of the tree and the idea that comes to the fore is the flexibility of uh, the nature of the tree, how they can be bent temporarily by a boy swinging on them and permanently by ice storms. Now, from here, we'll move on to comment on the setting of the poem, the time and place at which this, this poem was written. Birches was published in 1916. It should be noted that Frost's Birches was influenced by his boyhood or childhood experiences of winter and summer in northern New England. Now, subject matter, what is this poem? What is really what is this poem really about? Um, the poem makes the reader to understand that the narrator looks at the birch tree in the forest and imagines their bent nature. Now, let us be visual for a moment. Um, for those people who grew up in villages or rural areas or places where you can find trees you know children are actually inclined to climb trees um, when you climb a tree and you sit on the branch or you are at the treetop you actually see that when you look down things look smaller from the top and so um, sometimes parents may shout at us and tell us not to sit on those trees or play with trees um, but at the end of the day you find that the poet let's come back to the poem the poet is expressing the idea that tree climbing is fun and it's a way of him escaping life's harsh realities he knows that the bending of the tree branches has been caused by ice and as a result of the weight of ice on the branches the poet climbing the birch means freedom and the act of swinging on the birches is presented as a way of escaping the hard reality of life like i said um, poetry makes use of figurative expressions poetry makes use of imagery now if you remember um our, our class our lecture on the pulley by george Herbert. now when you look at that word the pulley something comes to mind when you look at this word birches something comes to mind the first thing that comes to your mind if you're familiar with the concept is a tree okay so now however in as much as the poet wants to escape the reality of life in as much as he wants to escape life's problems however in life one cannot escape from these problems because there are responsibilities the poet actually places a contrast between childhood memories the fun that one has in childhood and the realities and responsibilities of growing up with problems associated with it problems associated with adulthood so now we'll do a brief uh, uh, um, line a stanza by stanza analysis in line one to five the opening line sets the stage for the subject matter actually the original um the original title for this poem was swinging birches uh, the title seems to be more accurate in description and depiction of the content of the poem 
especially the mood talked about here. As stated, in writing this poem, Frost was influenced by his childhood experience of swinging on branches. However, in an attempt to recreate the memories of his childhood, he prefers to think about, about some boys swinging on the branches. Now, let's move to line 6 to 13. The poet has returned back to his childhood in his imagination. Now, you find out that everything that is expressed here in this poem was conceived in his imagination. It is possible for you as an adult to reminisce to think about your times of childhood that can only be possible through the imagination you can actually be in a place in one place maybe you are somewhere in the united states and you can imagine yourself in china now this is only possible via imagination and that is something that is a factor that the poet actually expresses here he actually praises and eulogizes the power of imagination Still going on, it looks at the tree that is battered by the breeze and beaten by the rain. It sheds off its shells and the fallen shells are compared to heaps of broken glass. This is suggestive of the fact that after man has experienced life, its beauty, turmoil and storms, he must shed off his body. He's talking about uh, uh, um, uh, the nature of man. Man must die someday and be swept away to be translated into another realm of experience and heaven so is it possible to say that if is it possible to say this poem is metaphysical in nature it has a philosophical undertone which is characteristic of metaphysical poetry now moving on to line 14 to 20 the poetic persona continues to describe what happens to the branches and leaves of the birch tree at this level of interpretation, the vivid description of the shape of branches of the tree is bent and withered. Now, in line 21 to 29, the poetic persona is stopped by truth in line 21, as reality dawns on him that he is only exercising his power of imagination as a way of escaping life's harsh realities. In line 40 to 59, which is the final a segment the party persona begins to have some nostalgic feelings of his past as he tells us that i was once myself a swinger of branches in line four think about those things you used to do as a child think about so much for how much how much fun you had then and look at yourself as an adult is it possible for you to go back to those things now the idea portrayed in branches i think is somehow similar to Larry Peter's idea in the panic of growing older. Although the difference, the major difference here is the use of nature, the, the philosophy of nature to express how one can use imagination to think about nature. And there is also an emphasis on nature here as compared to the panic of growing older by Larry Peters. Now look at the themes. The transition of childhood to adulthood, which we have already emphasized, this is a dominant theme. The poet decides, desires that desires to see or to experience his state of childhood again. He also stresses the fact that before one becomes an adult, one learns a lot of things during this transition as the individual climbs the tree of life. So you see, the tree is a visual and at the same time, the tree, the tree is visual and at the same time expressing a thought here. The poetic persona dreams of his childhood and wants to go back from there. But it is only possible via imagination, via the mind. Another theme here, the celebration of the imaginative spirit. In this poem, the poet celebrates the ability of one's imagination to assist in a transition from the problems of life into a sublime realm of peace and happiness think about how you were so happy during your childhood think about the freedom living a life that was void of responsibilities and now 
by the time you begin to look at that contrast you understand the concept that has been explained in this poem which leads us to the third theme the third theme says the utopian world of a child is compared with the dystopian world of an adult now look at it here utopian utopian child dystopian adult now you look at this concept the utopian now the utopian concept explains a world where everything is smooth a world that is free of problems a world that is free of challenges and turmoils and suffering that is the utopian world that is the world where we, where, where children live um, the dystopian world of an adult is a pathless world. there are a lot of responsibilities challenges with a pose to threat to existence first shows in this poem that the poetic person has desires to escape from the realities he is surrounded as an adult and that leads us or further explains the next thing which says life is harsh the poem portrays the fact that life can be difficult for an adult in talking about the phase of adulthood or experience an important point that the poet tries to make is that the world of an adult is very complicated if you understand the concept being explained um, being painted by Larry Peters in the panic of growing older you would also understand the concept being explained in Birch's now we'll also go further to look at the poetic devices used in this poem the poet makes use of simile simile in line 17 to 20 for example he says you may see their trunks arching in the woods um yes after trailing leaves on the ground like girls see the use of like like girls on hands and knees that throw their hair now the poet also makes use of hyperbole in lines 9 to 13. he says he expresses uh, a situation where the heap of broken enamels from the birch is compared to the inner dome of heaven wow how is that possible I take it again where the heap of broken enamels pieces from the birch they are compared to the inner dome of heaven the idea is hyperbolic in nature this is an ex this is an exaggeration that is trying to paint the beauty of the birch personification in line 21 truth is given a human quality let's read what it has to say line 21 says what i was going to say when truth broke in so you can see how the attributes of um, something human is given to something that is inanimate the poet uses contrast this is another poetic technique that helps to bring the message this technique is exemplified by the contrasting reality with imagery that is you see the comparison between a boy swimming on a tree and the activity of ice storms now those ice storms were actually talking about the ushering in of prob uh, problems that come with adulthood you can see the use of contrast there how can a tree be beautiful good to swing on and at the same time be destroyed by ice storms now that face of danger compared with the beauty of a tree now these things are contrasting the poet makes use of um, assonance the a sound that assonates in when bend and left in line one and I sound assonates in I that is I first person uh, pronoun and right I assonates there the poem is also a free verse um, it's written in free verse there is no distinguishing end rhyme scheme because um, this might be because writing in free verse allows for freedom from the limitations of end rhymes now look at this question birch tree swinging is a temporal distance from earthly worries discuss 
another question here comment on the language and diction of the poem now you must note that in the course of this class some questions will be displayed on your screen so as to determine how much that you have learned thank you